What's going on YouTube? What's going on you guys? It's your boy Matt Thomas, your boy Royalty. Back with another video. Uh, today we have training. Put you guys through like a little understanding of like a pre-game warm-up. Training schedule that I do with my trainer. And as you guys know him as Mo, uh, former Washington Wizards guard. Um, one of the best players I've probably seen in person, played against in person. You know, have reps up with in person. We're going to go through a little series of um, our actual pre-game warm-up. Now our pre-game warm-up is pretty crazy because our warm-up is harder than most other people's warm-ups. But I want to show you guys just like the underlining of everything that I'm doing to kind of get in sharper shape, be solid, be good. I want you guys to see like the little nitty-gritty of it, you know? You can go to a park, I go to a park with um, some decent hoopers and kill them and give you some highlights. But I want to show you guys what actually goes into it. I really do love this basketball thing that we do. I love where I'm at in my game and the content that I've been recording for you guys, you know? so. Uh, stay tuned for the video, man. It's, it's gonna be a, a, a very good one, a very interesting one. You guys can steal any workouts you guys see. You guys can see steal any um, any concepts you guys see, man. It's your boy Matt Thomas, your boy Royalty. Let me stop talking your AO off. If you guys are new here, like, comment, subscribe, and don't click this mother video. You guys normally ask, like, what do I do to get prepared for games? How do I train? And what do I lock in on? Well, as you can see right here, what I'm doing is triple threats towards the middle. I have to make 15 all net. And locking in with this aspect just holds you to a certain standard. It's a triple threat right over the top into a pound dribble and knock it down. Now as well, you have to do with one side, you have to do to the other side. So this consistency is my warm up. Before I get started into a game, I probably make 150 to 175 shots. Nowhere near as close to the free throw line. I try to lock in with this aspect because it gets me sharper. You know, it works on the arc of my shot as me being a bigger guard. My lats are normally tight. I find myself doing this warm up because it's pretty beneficial. Um, as you guys can see, Mo with the gray on, he's the, the trainer that I've been working with, the former NBA player. I mean, this guy is such a sharp shooter, such a sharp player. And a lot of things that he do, I try to emulate into my game as well. Although I have my own game, there are things that I can steal from this. Within this move, what I'm doing is a pound dribble to the tween the legs into a jump shot. Um, the reason of this, I stop a lot. I pause a lot. I do a lot of shifting with my hips. And as you can see, I'm bobbling the ball because this is a different movement for me. This movement will have me come off the screen hard and have me come off a moves hard and go right into my shot. But at the same thing, the same juncture, I'm not just shooting this shot just to shoot it. I have to put arc on it because the reason of the arc is what allows my jump shot to get deeper. I'm able to get more space. If I have another guard that's athletic or a big that's athletic that's guarding me. As you guys can see, it's about consistency. It's about going game speed. Sometimes you'll see my eyes being down. This is a natural aspect of basketball. But the one thing that's consistent is going into the moves about 85 to 90% game speed. Um, and this is just a warm up. As you can see here, everything is a hip swivel into a jump shot. And this is what I want to show you guys about movements, patterns, and things of this nature. What makes a player a great player is being able to do everything in short stints and being good at what you do consistently. At this time in the video, as you can see, I'm having a hard time stepping into the shot out of the move. 
what Mo is telling me is basically you have to cover space. You know, being a smaller guard, you have to maximize the space that you have. And staying tight can hinder you as a basketball player. Most NBA players, overseas players, actually maximize their space to get their shots. You can know players like Kyrie Irving, Mike James. They separate themselves well as being smaller guards. And by me maximizing the space, being able to hit guards with bumps and things of that nature, this is what I'm focusing on. As you can see, my foot goes into the one, two, into the shot. I'm actually going downhill from a standstill point. Now this is pretty imperative because going downhill from a standstill point will put your defender on his heels. Putting your defender on his heels means that you have him at your mercy. You can choose what you want to do at any given time and there's nothing they can do about it. As you can see, I'm working on the aspect of getting right into my jump shot. As me going downhill, nine times out of 10, I feel like I'm going to score. It's very hard to stop me downhill. Adding this aspect to my game also works on the hesitation move, works on the crossover hesitation, and works on anything else that I have planned for the defenders that they don't know what they're expecting. Basketball is such a beautiful sport. As right now, Mo is telling me he wants me to make three consecutive shots. And the objective is to read my defender. My defender is obviously chasing me, hitting me off my hip. I need to come off out of it. Keep it simple early, jab step into the shot. The only thing about this that I was reading was that I'm not getting enough space on my defender. He's able to keep his hand in the cookie jar. This is one of the things that I hate as defenders, you know, kind of keeping that there. Right here when you get tired, you kind of revert back to what you know. Mo was coming over to tell me right now is that you're not getting enough separation. You're using too much energy, you don't need to. Right here, just catch the triple threat and just jab him. You're a bigger guard, most guards will find this uncomfortable. Most people will look at this as an offensive foul, but actually it is not. Find yourself getting open, being smart, and using what you have. Now, while I might have missed this shot, it definitely felt much easier for me to go into it. And seeing that he's overplaying me, I can just use that against him. Just like that. One quick triple threat move, and I was able to attack the basket. Now he has to play honest. As you see, he's playing honest, his hand's not in the cookie jar anymore, and I'm able to get into whatever I want. I kinda have him at my mercy. The only thing about it is, is I have to make the shot. One thing that frustrates me is when I miss shots, and the defender thinks that they're the ones that dictated that shot. I'm like, no, it was just me. Either it wasn't enough arc, either it wasn't enough lift, or either I got distracted by myself within a moment. Currently we have worked both wings. Now it's time to go top of the key free throw line extended. As you can see, I'm getting a good sweat in. I'm getting a little bit fatigued. And this is when it matters. It matters at this point because the defender actually feels like they're gonna get a stop. He tells me at this juncture, like you're not gonna score anymore. Well, obviously he was wrong with that. I gotta get locked down on You're not going nowhere. But the focus is just to lock in, not to really engage too much and use their lackadaisicalness or their aggression against them. As you can see, I knocked down his pull-up shot. And what's gonna happen, he's gonna overplay it, and you just use it. Blow right by him and get to the basket. The focal point is reading your defender. 
this is one thing that Kobe did well. You know, he sees their foot, he sees their attitude, he sees their eyes, and you can tell a lot by a player's eyes. Most coaches, whether college coaches, high school coaches, or overseas coaches, they tell you the eye test tells you what you need to know. And at this point, I already knew I had the defender at my wits. Obviously, this is not a real game situation, but after a certain point, you don't want to keep getting scored on. You don't want to keep getting crossed. You don't want to keep looking silly in front of everybody out there. But what you have to focus on as a scorer is when you miss a shot, one or two, you don't get too rattled. Find yourself getting to an easy basket, whether a layup or a free throw, and you'll find the keys to success for yourself.
I go down, if I go down for a crime, since he got the chain on, he's an accessory. <laughs> it for today appreciate you guys tapping in and you know watching the video I got a good workout in as you guys can see I had a great game um, the only thing about those workouts is it, it definitely <laughs> what's up man uh, only thing about the workouts is like I said they they fatigue you out you know they get you ready for whatever you need to be ready for I find myself kind of fatiguing myself out towards these games that really don't have too much meaning you know, just trying to be sharper with a lot of things and uh, show you guys, you know, all the mistakes, all the positive parts. Like I said, we can go to a park and play, get some bombs and get some highlights, but you want to be good at real basketball, it's the page you need to be following. Talk to you guys later.